Welcome to Making Your Miles Count Production, an educational program to all Canadian lease owner operators with your host, Robert Scaper. Okay, when it comes to ransomware, we had an experience. Uh, how long ago was that? Oh, six years, five years? Six, six. Something like that. That was back when Mike, uh, when uh, Bitcoin was eight hundred dollars a coin. That's so a long time ago. That's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, um, we had uh, obviously somebody had clicked on uh, one of our employees or me. I don't know. Can't remember who it was. Um, clicked on a uh, an email that came in, and then uh, that email uh, had a virus in it. And then it uh, started at what date? I don't know, or whatever. It started taking over, uh, I guess it was Microsoft files? All, uh, the, all the shared server files, I think. Yeah, something like that. Then we found out about it, and uh, we did have a backup copy, so we could do some stuff, but it was a little bit iffy. I think, I, I think to some degree we lost a whole bunch of pictures that were unretrievable, uh, something like that, and... Uh, and so I hemmed and hawed, and uh, they, we actually had, uh, it's actually, it would be ransomware. They held, uh, they held our files until we, get, uh, until we pay them, and then we give them, uh, and then they give us a code, and they open it up. Now, we, it, I think it was four Bitcoins we owed them, or they wanted, and, we, uh, and so I sent $3,500 to somewhere in British Columbia, um, um, a guy, we converted that into Bitcoin, which was a actually a hassle because they didn't, you know, the, the bank didn't even want to send it. Why do you want to send it to the Israel? It was a, a lot more of a hassle than normal. But anyway, so we um, sent it there. And in order to convert it into, we co- converted it all into Bitcoin, but it worked out to be, uh, we only, uh, for four Bitcoin, we actually converted it all and it became 4.1 Bitcoin or something like that, some fraction, but $110 uh, uh, extra that we needed. So we, we paid $3,400 and then we got the key and then we unlocked it and, uh, and then we, we got our stuff. So we, we did have a, an experience with ransomware. Now, since then, I guess... To some degree, we're still susceptible, but not nearly as much. Well, uh, we didn't have the greatest backups at that point. Now, we, like, now, now it wouldn't be an issue. Oh, okay. Oh, backups was the issue back then. Oh, yeah, okay. So anyway, I remember you asking, well, what should we do with the other 10 or 11% of a Bitcoin? And, uh, and I remember doing the math on it. How do you get Bitcoin back to cash and bring it back here? And I said, ah, just leave it, you know? And so basically forgot about it. Since then, I mean, we, yeah, we have backups. We have lots of other things that we do much more for safety along that lines. Uh, but then Bitcoin started taking off and it got higher and higher and higher and higher. And at one point that what started out to be about 110 bucks uh, was 25, 2600 bucks. And I remember you asking me, so well, what do we do this? Well, it's 25, 2600 bucks now. Maybe what would you, what you do with it? And I thought, you know what? We got scammed for thirty four hundred dollars. As soon as it's above thirty four hundred, then we'll cash it in, and then we're at par. But it never got above, I think twenty six, twenty six hundred or something like that, and it started going down. So then, who was the clearinghouse that we sent it to? What was the name of that? It's uh, Quadriga. Quadriga. Yeah. So that was the Canadian. Uh, scandal i guess which is a fabulous thing when it comes to bitcoin there's a lot of people who are totally pro bitcoin and and stuff like this but in that particular case um i did i I watched one documentary on it and basically what happened was from what they said anyway that the owner of the company he kept uh reinvesting reinvesting and reinvest and and as long as bitcoin was going up he kept making money but then he'd make some bad investments and it goes down. And in the end, he had control of a whole bunch of money. He squandered it all away on bad investments. Not all the way, but some of it or whatever. And then he apparently died in, in India or something like that. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know, whatever the story is. It's out, out there somewhere. But you mentioned the other day what that some money was moving around. Apparently, yeah, I'm not quite sure about all the details, but yeah. But somewhere in uh, in in 2022, 
half a million was moving around or something like that. But when it comes to people doing Ponzi schemes, the clearinghouse uh, has an awful lot of responsibility. And if there's no oversight in it, I guess you have if you have access to millions and millions of dollars, uh, you can invest it and, and do whatever. And if there is no oversight, oh my goodness, they can do whatever. And if they're a poor investor, then uh, all of a sudden everything is gone. And did I lose $2,600? No, I actually lost $110, but I also lost 3400 to to ransomware too. So uh, yes, I lost a little bit, but it's, it's a good experience. I never had much excitement for Bitcoin or anything like that. Maybe that cured me or something like that, but it's uh, scams like that where they, I guess technically that wouldn't be a scam, was it? Well, oh, actually the ransomware is, yes, but the uh, the Bitcoin, uh, that was only the... He was being investigated. He was? Yeah. At the time? Some yeah, at some point. At some point, ransomware is an is an issue. They're targeting the large larger corporations or larger entities now, eh? But I guess in the end, it all comes down to backups. Is backups the most important? Yeah. What happens if let's say they get it in there and they, in your backup there is a uh, the virus? Well, that's why you you have historical backups. So you can go back before that happens. Oh, I see. And it yeah. like it, oh it's not rewritten on top of it. That's no, right. it's you... it's not, and it's not active in the in the backup, right? So it's not like yeah. it's a running program. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so that's ransomware. Um, there was another situation that we had, and this was in 2017. When did we get rid of Microsoft? Probably 2014, 15, somewhere in that area, and. Uh, 2019, we get I get a uh, a peer later from a law firm in Ontario that says we uh, we are we're investigating you for use of Microsoft products uh, without uh, authorization for using these products. Yeah, I think that's the gist of it. And what they what they were asking me to do was go through every single one of our computers, get their licensing code, get the licensing code. And uh, and send all of that information to uh, to them. And I'm thinking, do you know how freaking much work that is? <laughs> Three locations or four locations. And first of all, I say, well, why? This isn't a court order or anything. It, the only thing official about it is a purulator. At that point in time, we I don't think we, well, we weren't using any. So I thought, okay, I think this is a scam. I've never heard of a scam using a purulator, but uh, I didn't tell them that I, we had stopped using it for years already, and I communicated back. In the end, I got a total of three purulators from them requesting this over and over again. And I think the, the last communication I sent to them was basically, if you really think that I'm doing something illegal, come on down and look for yourself. Get a court order, we'll see you, and I'm fully willing to comply. And then they just disappeared. That's probably one of the most... Uh, they were basically fishing for information on what we have and don't have in, in, in Microsoft. I view it as a scam, pri primarily because we weren't even using Microsoft products anymore for a number of years. But I just wanted to see how aggressive they would be and how much they would they would follow through with it. I guess as a business... The last thing we want to do is be intimidated by somebody who sounds official, even looks official. And uh, I didn't hire a lawyer at the time, but I did a little investigation uh, in the law firm that sent it out, and they didn't have a great review on the, on the Internet. So I thought, I kind of think this is just more a phishing scheme. But it was a pretty official scheme, probably one of the most official things I've ever seen or heard of. I guess it happens to businesses. You have to be a little bit skeptical to start off with before anything else. Well, what's interesting about that is so they're just sending out these, these letters to different businesses. And that's pretty much exactly how most ransomware attacks work too, where they just send out emails to every business saying, you know, hey, this is a resume, open me up. And then uh, it's just, you know, they hope, they hope you comply. Yeah. And so this is really the same same idea you, you were mentioning before if, if somebody opens up a pdf with a slightly different adobe or something immediately they have access or yeah, so it's just like a standard virus yeah so it doesn't even have to be a, a, a weird i guess suffix at the end of the file it can still be a pdf file mm -hmm. right i guess our standard procedure for all of our employees is whenever you get an email you have to verify that it's it is somebody 
Or well, what is it? Okay. How do you safeguard? Well, our emails are all scanned for viruses mm-hmm. before they Oh, before, before they, they even open. get in? Yeah. Boy, that would be interesting programming to figure out how to recognize a, a virus just from a, from a PDF.